hey, 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 guys. How are you? What is up? Oh, you know what? Let me close this because I just realized that I have my light show. You see this? Trying to give you a little taste of outside. It didn't really work. Okay, great. <laughs> We're just going to do that. Hey, guys. How are you? All right. So, as you guys know, we have this insane moon that is going to be happening. Um, it is stressing all of us out. <laughs> I've talked to so many people and it is, it is really doing a lot. Um, so I wanted to come up here and share this information with you guys. This light is so loud. Okay, cool. I have a new spot. I know like you guys probably missed my little um, astrology colors and things that I had going on as far as my couch, but I actually enjoy having the comfort of my bed right now. So I'm going to embrace that but I really wanted to get a chance to talk to you about this moon because I've gotten so many personal messages um, really stemming from you know asking for advice or stemming from just wanting to know exactly what is going on I've had phone calls at 3 o'clock in the morning where I happen to be up studying and I get people that are stressed out about something going on or I've had you know just a lot of things happen to friends or people in the far distance that I haven't even spoken to in so long and they just are expressing how they are not understanding what is going on. So I really wanted to take a time to talk to you guys about this because this moon is insanely important to understand and the reason being I would say that is because it is the strongest moon in 120 years. So obviously most of us were not alive 120 years ago. All of us weren't alive unless you have some kind of... Um, juice that you're drinking that's awesome that's keeping you alive but <laughs> um, this is the strongest um, emotional and life-changing moon that a lot of us are just honestly wondering what it what's going on with all this what is this energy what is what am I feeling why am I feeling all the feels and why are all these things happening and I'm watching all these videos and it's aligning with my life and I'm so confused and it's wonderful that we're talking about it because ultimately at the end of the day a moon of any sort whether it's a full moon a new moon is bringing a change into your life and the moon in our charts represents emotion so anytime we're going through an emotional change and it the, the moon is right there it definitely has something largely to do with that um, but I wanted you guys to understand this moon because this moon is connected to a node of the moon that's called K2, and it talks about the south node of the moon, which basically means we have the um, north node and then we also have the south node. The north node is Ra'u and the south node is K2. Um, and Ra'u and K2 really stem from uh, Vedic astrology. And uh, there's a lot of controversy going back and forth between the two different astrologies, and I happen to use both because I think that they both give a lot of information and another offering to the map of life that we're really trying to understand. And ultimately, that's just how life works in general. A lot of us are not realizing that we all have these belief systems, and ultimately, if we put them all together, they really create a larger understanding to all these separated maps that we you know, we can learn so much about, but then when we like really put it together, it just opens up our eyes in so many different ways. So, um, Rahu and K2 are the North Nodes. They are actually in Vedic astrology considered to be a dragon that was grant, um, was seeking immortality. Um, and the gods did not want to grant this immortality, but against the gods' wishes, they drink um, juice from the immortality cup and they turned into immortal. Um, as punishment from the gods, they sliced the dragon in half, and one of the uh, sides of the dragon became the mind, which is the brain, um, and that is considered to be Ra'u, our north node, and the second half considered to be K2 is the body, and that's our south node. What that really talks about is the north node is all about our destiny, where we're going to, um, and our south node is where we've come from. So if you ever take a chance to look at um, some of these books that talk about the North Node and South Node, it really is kind of freaky, but it's so honest and so um, liberating to like liberating to understand what you came from and really where your destiny is is going in this particular life. And ultimately, what you're trying to do is unlock the understanding of your Ra'u, your destiny, so that way you can take both elements and push them together and really work with them hand in hand so it's not forgetting what you've been through but it's having respect as to where you're going sorry 
This happens every time, guys. Skylar! Shh! <laughs> um, it's really saying that you're wanting to take something that you went through in the past and understand it, but give respect towards your future and really be able to take both of those elements and place them in together to create that full understanding. And that ultimately is the full dragon. And in itself, it sounds a little crazy, but immortality is exactly what we're going through until we're called home. So I wrote a uh, quote about this earlier today, and some people might have read it and been like, what in, on earth is she talking about? But I said that even vampires um, life or even a vampire's life is not guaranteed. And that's ironic because obviously when you think of vampires, you're like, well, they're already dead. But then if you think of the fact that you're pulling their heart out, they have another life, but yet when you pull their heart out or you drain them from their blood and they don't have any more, and a lot of the mystical shows that you may watch or that you may see around, that ends a vampire's life. So ultimately what that's trying to say is immortality is actually given to us until we're called home. Our lives are unlimited until we're called home. And realistically speaking, when you're taking the North Node and the South Node, and you're really being able to unlock the secrets of the North Node, unlock what exactly you're here to do, what your purpose is, and you're really able to embrace that purpose and utilize all the resources that you were given, because let me tell you, I cannot stress this enough. When you are actually delivering your purpose when you are taking the vow that you made to the spiritual realm and you are delivering exactly what you're supposed to be doing those resources are going to be given to you money and you know even down to fame or all these extra things that we think oh my god i need this i need these resources i need that i need this those are all material things that are a part of the matrix and they just stand for metaphorical understanding to what exactly you are here to do. So resources, you will be given that. You will be given that. Sometimes we're like, oh my God, I need this to get this done and then it appears. The reason why it appears is because it was supposed to be given to you so you can get the things that you need to get done. When you don't get a resource that you feel that you need, it's because you need to look around you and you need to see what exactly it is that you can utilize and and apply that to getting what you need to get done. Anytime we think, I don't have this, look around you. I promise you and almost guarantee you whatever is around you can be utilized for what you were trying to get done. So that being said, with unlocking that understanding of your purpose, unlock that, guide yourself in that direction, channel your intuition. It is so, so, so important. It is so easy for us to go on social media and you know, go ahead and look at other people's opinions, call our friends and ask for guidance or whatever the case may be. Your honest, most truest guidance is within self. Every single person around you is projecting something that you need to see within yourself because ultimately we only attract a mirrored image of the things that we need, that we want to change, or some kind of way of forming some kind of attention to saying, Alert, 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 pay attention to this. This is something you either dislike, something you like, something you need, whatever the, the situation may be. People around us are only mirrored images of what our own personal guidance is trying to tell us. So, that being said, it's important to understand that once you unlock your purpose, once you understand the Ra'u, once you unlock that, that north node and that destiny is really when you can now take the things that you've learned in the past. Now, past does not always mean simply this lifetime. There are what's called Akashic Records, and I tell you so dearly, please Google it because it is a real thing. Um, Willow Smith has made a song that had to do with it. It's talking about all of the lifetimes of memory that we have. And actually what's interesting is um, I had someone tell me that there's now Akashic healers who can now like go back into your past lives and work on some healing energy with that. And there's a lot of Reiki artists that can do that as well. So that being said, what I would advise you to do is to really channel in what is going on in your life, especially at this moment, that is something that is karmic that is ready to end for you to continue to go towards your destiny. I say this because, like I said, you're unlocking that purpose, but ultimately is to bring your past and your destination and bring it together into that dragon that was explained earlier so you can utilize everything all together and your body is full, right? So you have the top of the dragon, which is the head, that's your destiny, and the body, right? 
and that's your past lives. So you want to bring that together because the head, yes, you can focus on something, but without a body, you can't move to where you're trying to go, and you can't really necessarily move with the body without having a head to have a direction of where you're going either. So you want to bring those two together. So the reason why this is such an insane eclipse, and the reason why it is going to be such a... A, a large event in all of our lives is really because of the fact that we have it on the K2 axis. The full moon will be on the K2 axis. K2 meaning past lives. With it being 120 years since it's been this strong, and the reason why I say it's going to be this strong is because, I have some notes, the eclipse is actually going to be taking place um, from 1.14 p.m. on July 27th. This is on Friday. So 1.14 p.m. all the way to 7.28 p.m. The real actual full eclipse will be in place where it's 100% like, you know, covering the sun. That will be around 4, 4, uh, 4.20 p.m. And that's going to be an event that it stays in place for an hour and 23 minutes. That is an hour and 23 minutes of energy. 120 years that it hasn't been that strong. An hour and 23 minutes. And the thing about it is some people say, oh, well, does that mean it's going to all happen within there? No, but you're going to feel that emotion. You're definitely going to feel it. But this eclipse is so powerful that it's going to have the effects that last up until six months. So I don't know if you've had something occurring in your life lately where, um, sorry, Skylar, <laughs> occurring in your life lately where you're like, okay, I feel like there's something from my past that I need to let go to go forward. And I'm going to actually go over, depending um, depending on your rising sign, so I will actually go over every single rising sign to tell you what house and area of your life this is going to affect. Again, rising. Rising sign. Not sun sign, not moon sign, rising. Um, so I will get into that. But there's an area in your life that it is time to end. It is time to cut it off. The reason being is because, um, so there's two karmic nodes, two karmic signs. Um, the karmic on the karmic going north, which is Rahu, is Aquarius. The karmic south, which is K2, is Scorpio. Scorpio is a, is a sign that you can definitely understand that whole concept of death and rebirth, okay? Letting something go in order to have something rise from the ashes and be able to survive, be able to be born. So this is exactly what all of us are going through right now. There is an area in our lives that we are wanting to end. Maybe some of us don't even want it to end. Maybe some of us are holding on to it. But understand this, eclipses don't care what we want. <laughs> eclipses are there to cut the cords or to begin something in new life. It is not about what we want, it is about what we need. We are in this lifetime because of things that we need to learn, not what we want to learn, okay? Um, understanding that, I want you guys to understand that this before I even go over what my notes are saying, I want you guys to understand, the summer is tough on a lot of us when it comes to emotion. We have six planets in retrograde, and we also have Chiron in retrograde as well, okay? That is a major thing. I will be releasing videos over this weekend that have to do with all of that. I have made videos, I'm editing them all. But I want you to understand, along with that, we also have the three eclipses. We have two partial solar eclipses and then we have a total lunar eclipse. Total lunar eclipse means a full reset. Anytime there is an eclipse, it is almost like a reset because you're taking two luminaries that stand for two different things, our ego and our emotion, and you're blocking them out for the moment, and it's a reset. For there to be a total reset on our emotion, on our ego, that is a large thing. So let's talk about the ideas of the ego versus emo uh, the emotions. The reason why I say the ego is because it's the sun and the emotions is the moon. So anytime we have any kind of full moon, we're actually having the opposing forces going, like trying to find balance between each other. So in this case, our um, we're gonna it's gonna be in Leo as far as the sun and it's going to be opposing Aquarius in the moon. This is going to be happening at four degrees and 45 minutes of Aquarius and four degrees and 45 minutes of Leo. Those two forces, when we think about the balance, so let's talk about that first, okay? 
Leo is the self-expression. It is the, I mean, think of the sun. It is the center of everything, right? All of the planets are circulating around the sun. So when you think of a Leo, as much as I love my Leos, Leos understand what it's like, like life. They are life force. They are energy. They are a, a Leo. Leos are usually in theater or it, they're singers or they're theatrical or they just love this spotlight. Um, some of them absolutely will be um, the front man of things. They enjoy the spotlight. That is a Leo. Understanding this is that the Aquarius is the opposite of that. I did a long video on Aquarius um, that I really would suggest for many of you to watch if you have any Aquarius within your birth charts as far as your sun, moon, or rising. Reason being is because Aquarius is a very misunderstood sign. Aquarius is the sign that detaches from society after studying society. So Aquarius will go towards society, learn about it, talk to people, especially eclectic people, people that are standing off away from the crowd, people that have a lot of knowledge to give. And Aquarius will take back that knowledge. Aquarius wants to find out what's going on with the community and how it can be changed. And then Aquarius goes off into its corner and it sits in solitude and it channels the energy from the universe to say, what exactly can I do? And it fills a cup up, right? Because Aquarius is the water barrier. So it fills this cup up. And then once it fills up the cup, it goes around and gives every single person some of that cup. Ultimately, what's in the cup is actually Neptune, Neptunian energy. That is that Piscean energy, right? Because Pisces is all about spirituality, understanding that this all this whole thing is somewhat of a simulation. You know, it's that consciousness. Neptune is that consciousness. Neptune represents the ocean. So think of that, and when you think of like Greek mythology, Neptune is the god of the ocean. So think of that being given into this cup. Understanding of conscience. And now, Aquarius is taking this cup and giving it to everyone, right? So Aquarius is all about stepping away, detaching from that, that self, right? Because Leo is, Leo is that, that, you know, that into itself. It's, it's that, that understanding of, of ego, really. So it's being selfless in a way, that Aquarius energy. It's being selfless and it's worrying about everything around it in order for the community as a whole to grow. So, that being said, when you're having those two forces opposing each other, what that really, really means is that it's saying, look at that concept. Look at self versus look at community and really be able to find the balance between the both of them. Now, with the moon being in Aquarius, which emotions is the moon, Aquarius is the detached, what that really is doing is giving us an opportunity to detach away from our ego and see what we need emotionally in order for us to be able to go ahead and be something larger. Now, when you're thinking about this, it's crazy because if Aquarius is the, the sign that is close to Ra'u, close to our destiny, it's basically asking what emotional things do you need to cut out completely cut out for you to be able to get to your destiny. That is the goal, getting to the destiny. But with K2 being right there with that energy, with Mars, which I'll get into being right there with that energy, this moon is not giving us a break at all. What it's really doing is saying what from the past lives, past lives, we're not talking about just this life, we're talking about going into our Akashic records and digging in deep. This is your lineage, you know, your family's lineage. This is emotional traumas that have happened in previous lives. This is all of the stuff right here that you have to really be able to channel in. And the craziest thing is we have no memory to those things. You know, you have deja vu, but you don't have those memories. So this is the moment where you're gonna start like channeling in what is this that I have to let go of that is going to let me and allow me to move forward. This is karmic. This is something that is so deep in our subconscious that we really need to like completely be, allow ourselves to expose ourselves, allow ourselves to be raw in order for us to really channel in what it is that we need to end. And that is a major thing. 
And not only do we have that, we have all these retrogrades going on in place as well. So what this is really doing is this is reflection of, you know, you have Mars in retrograde, so a reflection of action. You have um, Pluto in retrograde. So that's our desires or how we um, are able to get the things that we want, right? So that's also in retrograde. We also have, um, what else? Mercury is going to be in retrograde. It, we're in the process, so we're in the pre-shadow. It will be in full retrograde. I believe it goes in the 26th. It's definitely going to be later this week. I have to get that date for you. But I believe it's the 26th or to the 20th between those. So it's going into full retrograde. Then we also have not just, and Mercury is our communication. That's our lower communication. That's our quick, quick communication, our ability to really like, that's our transportation, our A to B. Um, so we have that also in retrograde. We have Neptune in retrograde. This is like one of the best retrogrades but the scariest because Neptune is all about our illusions. So now we're seeing things very clear in certain situations that are almost scary, um, especially if you have it in like the 12th house, which I actually have my um, Neptune in the 12th house and it is freaking me out. I'm seeing dreams that are just clarifying things. It is the craziest thing ever. I'm like, what is going on? So it depends on where Neptune is in, in your birth chart, but that's also creating clarity and drawing back those curtains so you can really be able to see what's going on. There's no illusions there at all. So Neptune is also in retrograde. We just got out of Jupiter retrograde and that's going that went direct on um, July 10th, um, but that's pretty much the only planet that's not going to be in retrograde during this time period. So with all of these planets in retrograde and then you have two major beginnings, which is the partial um, eclipse, and then now you have this major ending that's karmic, and it's 120 years that it's never been this strong. We're going through it, and I can't stress this enough. It is, it, I understand that we all have our belief systems. I mean, I still believe in God, even though I, you know, practice astrology and learning about astrology. I, if I, it's made me believe in God even more. It made me believe in my spirit guides even more. Um, but understand that astrology is there to help you understand what you are going through. To be able to pinpoint these things and say, it's in this house, this is affecting me. I had um, someone message me earlier and they said, I want to know what this is. Like sent me their birth chart and they realized it had to do with their places of work. So that helped them say, okay, now I know I need to have a major karmic ending. And because of that, I know which job that I need to choose because they have two options. You know, I had another person who somebody's passing away and it was a very large issue for them because they really, unfortunately, didn't have the best relationship with this person but understanding what that person meant what was passing with that person allowed them to realize what they need to let go of when that person you know goes and it takes their last breath it is what is going with them that is going to make them continue to have support in the future to be what they want to be and to be what and to deliver their purpose so understand all this energy it's a lot of energy and it's okay that some of us wake up in the middle of the night and we're crying and we don't understand why or, you know, we reach out and or even therapists. I want you guys to understand this. Now, I don't want to quote myself because of the fact that I looked up this person's um, astrology, astro astrological chart, um, and they, they, they don't have the birth date, like the birthday time for this person, an accurate birth date. But a lot of you have heard about Demi Lovato's issue with addiction right now and how she is was rushed to the hospital. I actually took it on myself to go ahead and look up her birth chart. And she actually has the moon in her area of health. And that's major. That just goes to show right there. Like a lot of us right now are really struggling in areas. And if we know how to pinpoint them, we might have better idea of, okay, this is what I'm going through. This is not something that you know, I'm just bugging out about. This is something that's really happening in my life and I can utilize my resources, I can utilize the retrogrades, the, the reflection modes that I'm in to really be able to get me through this time period. You know, so another, um, there was two other celebrities that um, they committed suicide earlier this year, which was or earlier this summer, which is a very heavy thing. And there was some aspects as far as to Mars that were very crazy and it could bring out something like that. So understand that like, this is a very real thing and it's really good to educate yourself so that way you know where in your life this is applying so that way you can seek the help that you need or you can ask for help in other areas whether it be friends or whether you know you take a vacation to really be able to reflect okay 
Um, so let's talk about the aspects so you guys can understand this too. So we talked about Aquarius as far as um, that being the moon and the opposing energy is the sun as far as Leo. Um, so basically I want you guys to understand um, Mars in retrograde, okay? So we have Mars in retrograde. When this event goes on as far as the eclipse, Mars is going to be conjunct. Okay, so the eclipse is at 4 degrees and 45 minutes. Mars is in that same house and in that same sign, and it's only a degree away, all right? Mars is a very, very aggressive energy. It is, if are all my Aries out there, all my Scorpios, okay? And don't take this personal. I have a ton of Scorpio on my birth chart. My mother is an Aries. I know a lot of Aries, and I love Scorpios, so I can tell you. There's no bias to this. But Mars rules that Aries energy and that Scorpio energy, okay? When you think of Mars as far as um, Aries, and Aries, if you've ever known Aries, they're beautiful people, but they are rams. They are go-getters. They are the, uh, the athletics of, um, or I should say the athletes of the Zodiac. They are very, like, if they want something, they just go for it. And if you think for it, about it, there's no stopping a ram, okay? <laughs> you don't want to get in the way of a ram. Um, but they, like, they have that Mars, like, I'm ready to go energy. It is that in, inner tornado, that fiery energy of, like, let's go, let's do this. And then when you look at the Scorpio, the Scorpio might be quiet for a little bit, but I, I, I can almost guarantee you if you ask a Scorpio, um, probably not one with, like, a Taurus moon because they're a little bit more, like, level-headed about their emotions. However... You will even find a Scorpio with a Taurus moon that will tell you this. When a Scorpio feels something, it is the most intense, and I know this because I have Scorpio in my chart so much, it is one of the most intense feelings. Them being mad, them being sad, them being happy, it doesn't matter the emotion. It is an intensity that they're used to, but most people won't understand, and majority of Scorpios will actually be very, very quiet about it. They will like just kind of... You won't know what a Scorpio is feeling, but they are feeling rage or intensity, whatever the case may be, they're feeling it, okay? So it is that Mars energy that's there. Mars is so close to the Earth right now in its retrograde period, and with the full moon being right next to it, it is literally a degree away. That is going to cause a lot of feelings of impulse, intense energy for a lot of us. We are going to be going through a lot of emotions. When I tell you, I have had these videos ready for you guys to be able to view for the past week and a half. I have been going through it. So when I am telling you, I have been feeling the feels of everyone around me, of my neighbors, of like walking, oh my god, I can't even tell you, walking down the street, especially in the city of Philly, and someone accidentally bumps you, and it makes me so irritated because I'm like, ugh, now I'm feeling my feels, and I'm feeling your feels, and I don't even know exactly why you feel this way, but I feel it. That is that energy, that Scorpio energy that I feel, but that's the energy for all of us right now. That Mars energy is like we are feeling impulsive, we want things done, we want things to make sense, we might not think about something before we act, especially when it has to do with our emotions, and this full moon is not going to make it any easier. Now, I know a lot of people have questions like, okay, well, how does this affect me personally? It doesn't mean that, let's say like you have the full moon in your sixth house of health, right? Sixth house of health daily activities, obstacles, um, competitive enemies, okay? Let's say you have the full moon there, but you don't have the full moon in like, you know, the 10th house, which is your career. So when it comes to like your health or a day-to-day, -day, you're gonna feel that energy. But when it comes to talking about your career, you may not necessarily feel that emotional intensity because it's not in that house. So you guys have to understand that it depends on where it is in your life, okay? Um, another aspect that's a major aspect, and pretty much um, the only other one, but I did want to mention a semi-sextile as well. Um, and oh, by the way, you guys, I know that some of these words might be a little bit out there for you guys. Um, they're regular words. Conjunct, if you look at conjunction, it means exactly what it means. Um, it means it's working with that energy. Um, 
And as far as like when I mention squares, I'm going to mention squares. So that's 90 degrees apart. That's actually causing a conflict. And the square, when it causes a conflict, um, what it means is that it's not a conflict that's like, okay, now it's a conflict and now I have to be, you know, demolished by it. No, it's offering you a conflict so that way when you confront that conflict, you're like, okay, this is the issue and this is how I can utilize that conflict to change because ultimately that's the goal. You cannot have change without change. So it's major for you to understand that, okay? So the square is actually with Uranus. I'm going to explain this. Let me just take a sip of water. Sorry, guys. Okay, Uranus, ironically, is Aquarian energy. So, now you have the moon that's in Aquarius, and then you have Uranus that's Aquarius, okay? But Uranus actually governs Aquarius. Uranus is that planet that has to do with um, breaking apart from things, all right? So I explained in um, another video, I was talking about Neptune being the conscience, okay? Actually, I'm gonna use my glass of water so you guys can see, get an visual. So um, Neptune is the water, right? It is the conscience. It's our um, subconscious, okay? It is spirituality. It is the illusion of what we're actually made of because ultimately we are an illusion. You know what I mean? Um, when you think about the fact of like we're made of anywhere between 50% to 65% of water, um, hello, that is like more than our skin and bone. So when you think of that, our whole being is just, conscience right it's our subconscious that's being that's holding up these skin and bones because it's our life force holding up these skin and bones so you have the water okay that's our subconscious and then Saturn is the building planet so you guys can probably understand what I mean by this with Capricorns Capricorns are builders they're all about building 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 whereas a Virgo is about like the details Capricorns don't want to deal with the details they want you to give them whatever they need so they can build with it okay so that's that Saturnian, Saturnian energy it's the building energy being disciplined and being able to build something so that way the consciousness can sit in it right think of like building um uh, as far as families you know Capricorns go out and they go get the bread or whatever the case may be bring it home and then that way you know they have something for the family they're they're being able to offer that stabilized foundation for their family okay so this would be the family the consciousness whatever however you want to see it as so now what happens is that Uranus and Saturn are just not cool with each other <laughs> even in like um, if you look at past like histories as far as like um, Greek mythology they're just not friends Okay, the reason being is because Saturn likes its stability. Saturn likes to build, but then it likes to like build and then like move on and build something else. Uranus comes over and is like, you know what? That's awesome that you like built this. That's great, you know? However, like now that we've done this, let's break it and let's build something else. And Saturn's like, what the fuck? I just built all of this and like now you want me to create something new? But think of it this way. Uranus is future technology. Uranus is um, breaking free from something that's traditional so that way something else can come new of it that's going to be a, an advancement of it, right? So if we still stay the same once building one thing, right? And this would totally, trust me, ask your Capricorn friends. Once they have something stable in one area, the worst thing for them is to go ahead and have to take that and like it mess up and now they're like, oh my God, you just plummeted everything. I have to rebuild and they get into this crazy depression, okay, because their whole thing is stability. However, if you talk to an Aquarius, Aquarius loves new, fresh, new ideas. Fresh new ideas, new people, new environments. So like that's an Aquarius energy. However, think about like computers and think about you know, technology in today's age, if we did not break a tradition or break something that was created in respect to what's created, if we did not break through that and say, okay, now we've learned this, but let's take this and let's bring it in, let's examine it, let's get the information from it, let's see what needs to be changed from it, right? That, that Aquarius energy, because now it's like, okay, how can we advance this? How can we make, how can we take this idea Thanks, Saturn. Thank you for that. But how can we take this idea and, and spin it into something better? Create something better from it. You know, it's awesome. You were, you were able to build this glass, and that's great. That's wonderful. I'm so proud of you. But I want to see something bigger than this. You could do better than this, right? That's that Uranus energy. Uranus. 
So there's a square with that, all right, because of the fact that now, so we have, sorry, so I don't get crazy off. We have this square because Aquarius, we have the moon in Aquarius, and then we have Uranus and Taurus. So they're squared each other. But this is ultimately awesome because even though they're squared each other when it comes to signs, they know each other's energy, right? Aquarius respects Uranus because Aquarius is governed by Uranus. So really what this says when you're saying, okay, well, how does this apply to the moon, Suki? What this basically says is this moon is going to have you detach. It's going to have you detach yourself from what's going on, your ego, right? You're completely detaching from your ego. And after you're detaching from your ego, you're like, okay. I've now detached. I know the things that I need to do for my emotional needs. I know the things that I need as far as what I need to let go so I can go towards my destiny. I know these things. And now I'm going to like allow Scorpio to just, you know, take that, take that death and then rise above the Phoenix, rise the ashes from the Phoenix, and then I'm going to go towards my destiny. But I'm also going to break free from whatever I know so I can advance. So that's going to cause that friction because now it's like even if you try to run from this energy, it's ultimately going to cause something in your life for you to have to break free. You have to break free. That is the only way that you are going to advance. That is the only way that you're going to get towards your destiny is if you break free. You have to. And that is one of the things that are so, so scary for all of us and I understand that. I'm going through it too. I mean, I can't even stress enough. I study all day. This is my full-time job now. And at the same token, I am going through it with you. I understand the pain that you're dealing with. I understand the comfort that is not being given during this time. But comfort is more poisonous than anything. Because when you're comfortable, you have no ability to advance. Because now you're just comfortable. You're just, you're, you're content. I'll never forget being at a yoga class and a um, yoga teacher said, be content. And I completely broke out of like my, my shavasana. I was like, whoa, content? No, 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 no. No content. You do not want contentment in this. There's no, no. Because when you're content, that means, oh, I'm okay with this. This is good. Now, if you want to be content about you know, trusting the universe, okay, I can understand that. But that doesn't mean be content and then just like sit there. I'm content, I'm okay, I'm gonna let the universe kinda do its thing, but then when the universe tells me to move, I'm just gonna be content and not do anything. No. You don't want that kind of, of life because that gets you nowhere. It's poisonous, it's dangerous, it's, 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 what's the point in being here at all? And like, there's no, spark there's no energy there's no change there's no evolution elevation like ascension nothing it's just to go to work every day wake up get a cup of coffee go to work come home take care of the kids go to bed repeat I just don't understand personally how people can do that it is the most mundane lifestyle and although some people like well I like the simplistic things of life that's not simple that's basic bitch and that is not going to get you anywhere but just sitting down wondering years later from then and being resent resentful completely resentful and saying I had this entire life to do so many things but I was content it's not worth it. it's just not worth it and ultimately I'm here to tell you that the moon doesn't really give a shit if you think it is or not so you can fight this energy but what's going to happen is the more that you fight it the harder it's gonna be let the shit happen let it happen it has to happen let it cleanse you let it reset your vibe let it do what it has to do because ultimately it is only there to elevate you that is it and I understand we are going to cry we are going to kick and scream we are going to be upset but ultimately what that does let the tears come out I've had people say to me I have uncontrollably just just crying let it come out because tears have salt in them and salt is a natural cleansing form just let it go it is like sage inside let it out Pour the cups out. Let the cups fall. Because Aquarius, right? Aquarius is about the cup. But in order to fill that cup, you have to pour out the cup that you do not need anymore. Pour it out. Let it go. Let it burn. Let Scorpio take it. 
and let yourself be reborn. It's a major thing. A lot of us are going to realize that this, because it is a karmic disconnection, right? We're, we're disconnecting from something in the past. You're going to feel almost like you're living a new life. You're going to feel like something just, this is, a lot of us are really feeling like, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I know I'm here, but there's just crazy shit going on right now. And I'm trying to put it all together. A lot of us are going to feel like that. And that's awesome. It is not something to be ashamed of. You are elevating. You are going to the next tier. You are going to the next level. Allow it to happen. Um, the only other aspect that I do want to cover is the semi-sextile. Now, sextile, anytime the planets have sex, I know that sounds crazy, but that's the way that they put it. Anytime the planets have sex, it's actually merging that energy, right? So when you think of sex, you're merging energies. So you're merging those two energies that are very much so alike or complementing energies, and you're creating something larger, okay? So that's semi-sextile, which means that it's actually, because anytime um, planets oop, are sextile, it is, they're 60 degrees apart, but this is a semi-sextile, so this is within like the 45 degrees to 60 degrees, okay? So semi-sextile, what that means is that it's going to have a little bit of an effect, a little bit of um, merging energies together. And that's going to be Saturn, okay? So Saturn is, where's Saturn, 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 Saturn? Where are you in my notes? Saturn is at 3 degrees and 47 minutes of Capricorn, okay? So it's sextile. So Capricorn and Aquarius um, are right next to each other. And realistically, Pisces is the sextile sign for um, Aquarius. However, because it's in the middle, that makes it semi-sextile. Um, so that being said... Um, Saturn is the discipline, the disciplined um, planet. It is the planet of restriction. It is the planet of groundedness. So what that really means is like being that, oh, I forgot to mention, Mercury is actually with the sun. It's not as close with the sun because conjunct really necessarily means it's within 10 degrees. Um, Mercury is actually being that the sun will be 4 degrees and 45 minutes of Leo. Mercury is not 10 degrees. Um, next to that energy, but it's 23 degrees of Leo, 23 degrees and 21 minutes of Leo. Um, so that's there. And then also you have the Saturn that's going to be semi-sextile to the Aquarius moon. So what that basically means, it's going to urge us to talk about these things because Mercury is communication, right? It's talking. However, keep in mind, Mercury is retrograde, right? Mercury is going to be in retrograde. It's not in retrograde just yet, but Mercury will be in retrograde, and Mercury is in its pre-shadow period right now. So what that means is we're going to want to talk about this. Whatever we're going through, we're going to want to talk about it heavily. Um, however, Saturn is going to restrict that energy from us a little bit. So we may either may not find the words, the right words to express ourselves, and we might just be like, it's like a funnel cup. It just goes out. Um, or what could happen is that it restricts us from like being too much. Um, we want to talk about it, but we're finding a little bit more of, um, cause we're restricted. We're not being like overly like, Oh my God, and blah, 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 blah. But I had a phone call come in. Um, <laughs> I apologize. Um, the thing about, um, the thing about it is that, um, ultimately what that does is it restricts you from talking. So that being said, Understand that there's groundedness with this, within this, but you still don't want to restrict yourself from talking just because you didn't, couldn't get out the words right away. Um, you don't want to restrict yourself from talking completely because what that does is it causes you to internalize everything. And now we have Mars also there too. So think about that. With Mars being that impulsive energy, now you have Mars being impulsive and it's in its internalized impulse. Like Mars being retrograde, Mars outside when it's direct it's going forward so it's like it's the energy of like I want to do this I gotta get this done let's do this it's the action outside but when it's internalized because it's in retrograde now all that energy is within so you have Mars you have rage inside of you of things that are going on that you're trying to let go of and then now you have Saturn there that's restricting you from talking about it so that's like a major major thing because you want to talk about it but you may not be using the right words. And then when you finally find the right words, it's going to be an issue because now you're like, oh my God, I don't know how to talk about this. So keep that in mind as well. This is a good energy to hold you back from speaking too quickly and being too impulsive, but you don't want to hold yourself back too much to the point where it's like, 
oh my god, I don't really know what to do and I don't know how to get this out because ultimately at the end of the day, I would rather you guys seek treatment or therapy or whatever you need, which is totally understandable. Please do not ever let someone think that you seeking therapy is something bad because a lot of us have mental health issues and I'd rather you guys go do that than make a mistake and do something drastic that is totally not needed because there's people that love and care about you. So it's so necessary for you to get the treatment if you have to. Um, and please, by all means, I always put my hand, my, my, my ears out there for you guys. If you ever need to talk about something, please, please, please. I may not answer you right away, but I will get right back to you as soon as I have availability to do so. Um, so I'm putting that out there for you. I don't care if I haven't talked to you in years. I have people contacting me that I haven't even been cool with in the past, but we have found a way to connect and I have been helping them. I promise you, I will put my hand out to help you. So please, please, please contact me. Um, other than that though, if you guys have to get therapy, get therapy, seek therapy, do the things that you have to do because it is so, so important, okay? Um, so that pretty much covers as far as what's going on with the aspect. Um, so we do have a new moon, which is the partial solar eclipse that will be happening on August 11th. And that is the new moon in Leo that will be happening. Um, that's a partial solar eclipse. So what that does is that's gonna bring in whatever that you're letting go right now, Wherever Leo sits in your birth chart, it's going to bring in something beautiful in your life when it comes to that area, right? So I'm going to give you guys an example. This is totally personal, but I vow to be post personal if I have to. Um, I have my moon in my subconscious. So right now, I and I will go over this. I will talk about this. Um, I'm going to end this video and then start another one to fresh it so that way it's not like forever long. Um, but like just giving you an example, mine is in my subconscious. So what I'm dealing with is I'm going through like a lot of situations feeling exhausted which I have been I've been sleeping at all hours of the day it's crazy but my dreams have been so ridiculously vivid it's almost scary and it scares the shit out of me I'm not even kidding you I've been writing them down it's been crazy but ultimately my subconscious is really connected and I will be making I already made the video I have to edit it and it's been very 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 hard for me to let this video go and me tell you it is very hard but i am getting to it and maybe that's my full the full moon happening to me um it talks about my last year make sure that oh wait there we go okay i'm back i'm sorry guys i don't know why it's a low network connection but um all right so basically with my last couple of months i went through an experience where i got drugs at a bar and i was really sad about it and um from that experience, it just really put me into a very dark place of trusting people and it was just a very horrible experience and I went through an entire year of learning, relearning my value because of this. So it was a very heavy thing. Um, you know, when you someone takes away that value and you have to relearn it at the age of 28, like when I tell you that, I never thought that that would be me, but that happened to me. So um, look out for that video because that's gonna, be a hard video to edit but I definitely want to get that to you guys so you can see you know the resemblance and hopefully some of you can resonate with it um, but now I have the Sun the uh, what is the partial solar eclipse that's going to be happening on August 11th and that is in my area of partnerships and my area of um, business partnerships and etc and like a partnership that was going on during that time that I got drugs really heavily affected me too um, so it made me have a lack of trust for a lot of people and that was terrible But now I'm going through the subconscious Ending of something right and it's breaking that that pain away from me and I'm going through it like crazy It's just breaking this pain of not trusting someone and you know letting people in your life and trusting that you you know somebody won't abandon you in a time where you know you could get drugs or the worst case situation do you know what I mean and I'm going to have a new moon in that area of my life to bring people in my life and relationships relationships in my life that are going to now come in through me ending that that negative state of my life okay so that's just giving you a example of how something like that can really be in your benefit so now guys I'm going to end this video and I'm going to restart a video what I'm going to be doing in the next video, and I hope you guys really, really, really um, take the time to find out your rising sign. I know that it might be a pain in the ass to some of you, but it's something that you can utilize for the rest of your life. It's like receiving a social security number. Um, and once you receive it, then you're like, okay, I have this, and now I know what to look at for horoscopes, and I know what to look at for 
um, you know, when it comes down, really horoscopes is the major thing because we a lot of times we view horoscopes and we're like, that doesn't match me. But it's because we're not looking at the right sign. So um, you guys can actually go on Astro dot cafe like cafe like coffee cafe astrology dot com and put your information in you do need your birth time um, major thing you can put an estimated birth time but it's not guaranteed that it's going to give you the exact information so keep that in mind but if you go to that website again it's astro dot cafe astrology dot com and you type your information in you can receive all of your stuff and at the um, if you see your natal chart it'll say like your sun your moon, and then a little bit at the end of that chart, it says Ascendant or ASC. That is your rising sign. Okay, um, that might be, oh, I'm sorry, no, your north node is at the bottom of that chart. So it's going to say your sun, your moon, and then across from your sun, it'll say ASC, and that gives you a rising, okay? Um, and that's really access to all the information as far as any horoscopes that anyone gives you because your Ascendant is the sign that sets up your map for the whole chart. And I want you guys to see what this looks like because this is exactly how I study the moon this is exactly what a birth chart looks like okay guys that's what it is this is the moon's birth chart that sounds crazy right but this is what happens this is that moon so when the moon is in full effect at you know 4 20 p.m. and it's going for an hour and 23 minutes this is exactly where all the placements are as far as like where everything is so this is the charts that I read when I read your birth chart. I know it looks like, like what the hell is that? But like when I see this, I know about your life, okay? So it's really important to understand that, let me see. As far as when the moon um, goes into full effect, as far as the, the, um, the eclipse, it will be in, Aries will be the rising sign during that time, okay? So anybody born during the eclipse would have an Aries rising. So as you can see, the way that the chart is set up, it'll have Aries and then Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, uh, Sagittarius, but I'm sorry, it's going the opposite way. So it's Aries, Taurus, um, Gemini, Cancer, it's going this opposite way. But let's say like you're a Taurus rising, right? It's gonna take this Taurus and bring this up and then everything is gonna change. So it's really, 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 really important for you guys to understand what your rising sign is because I, I don't know what's going on in your life unless I know your rising sign and that's why it's so important so um, I'm going to stop this and I'm going to start another video and that's going to tell exactly what areas in your life that this full moon will affect based off of your rising sign okay guys so stay tuned um, I look forward to talking to you guys in about one minute okay all right talk to you soon oh and I did see on um, the comment before um, thank you so much for telling me I know my shit. I love you. <laughs> I study this all day, every day. I just wanted to tell you, I did see your comment. Um, and I saw Joe. I, Joe, I saw you called me on Facebook. Sorry, I'm on Facebook Live, so I couldn't answer. And, um, yeah, I'm feeling this full moon already as well. All right, guys, so I'll see you in about one minute. We'll take a one-minute break, okay? All right, bye. Finish! <laughs>